This is International Master Eric Kislik, and I'll be analyzing all of the games between Stockfish 8 and Alpha 0 to demonstrate how Stockfish could have defended and avoided losing. There's a common misconception that Stockfish was summarily outplayed in every single game and um, basically lost because of a very, very early error and had no way to defend, whereas it's quite a bit more complicated than that. It seemed like a lot of the defensive mistakes were caused just simply due to lack of search. And we can see this already in the first game. I'm just going to skip through the moves very, very quickly. Stockfish sacrificed a piece for slightly insufficient compensation, but it, was, it, it should have been enough to draw the game. White has seven pawns here and only one pawn island, so it should be possible to defend everything simply due to the lack of weaknesses. Here Black had a serious threat of playing bishop h3. So now White could have just played king g2, stopping the threat. And now, as long as the threats are stopped, White should be able to draw this position. White can play f5, take the bishop, and go queen d2. And so in this position, Black shouldn't have sufficient attacking material to create serious problems for White. So I analyzed some moves here. All of the moves here in this clip uh, I've analyzed at above depth 35 with the latest Stockfish version from December 11th and I did not find any errors with any of these moves. So apparently white should have just been able to defend the position here after king g2. There are no serious threats, but after queen takes c7, white's king position was the main problem and white eventually ended up losing because the bishops were just too powerful. So I'll skip through this and go on to the next game, but it's very interesting just to note that the natural human move was king g2 on move 31 when white would have been able to defend. So let's go on to the next game, the second game. In the second game, this was the only one in which Stockfish actually had a real advantage. Here, white could have played knight f1, perhaps with knight e3, or else just to reroute the other knight with knight 3 to d2. But in any case, white had knight f1 available again. Played rook ad1, kind of an anti-positional move, the rook isn't doing anything on d1, and if it wanted to support a pawn break, rook a to b1 followed by a3 and b4 perhaps could have been a better plan, although also difficult to execute. So what ended up happening here is we reached a closed position where it was difficult to come up with a plan, but white did have a human plan that was available. So, it, so one plan that white could have played was bishop h2 with the plan of of maneuvering the knight to the g3 square. I like this plan a lot because it basically just tries to occupy f5. So we occupy f5, take, 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 and here we can put the queen on e4, and it basically slams the door shut and makes it impossible for black to break through here. So in this case, you could say white to an extent has a certain level of domination and holds the position. So that would have been one very nice plan. Um, but even after h4, white should have been able to defend this. But the thing is, white needs to act quickly because black has a straightforward plan. The plan here was the exact plan played in the game. It was to play bishop here, knight to d6, bishop to h6, and in many cases playing rook a8, and in, in some cases rook a5 and bishop a6 could be played when the c4 pawn is a serious problem. So the plan that I like for white, which I think is really the only plan to, that we can play for, is to play rook to g1. And the plan is just to play f4. So white has a pawn break in completely closed positions. Pawn breaks are, are necessary if we want to open up the position. And in this case, we have to open up the position to prevent the opponent from executing his plan. So here, white can play uh, g takes f3, g takes f3. And in this position, I, I also analyzed the move f4 here. And deep analysis here confirmed that white was able to actually hold the position. So this is quite complicated, but white is, I, I concluded white should be able to draw this position as well. And the thing is, as the position opens up and becomes less closed, um, Stockfish's evaluations get more and more accurate. It's, it's able to calculate the positions more and more accurately. So the position opens up here within a few moves, and I was able to determine that white's able to defend here. Of course, the defense is not so simple, but white's able to move the king out of the way, is able to play queen d1, is able to play b3 and hold the position. So black's main plan of trying to attack the h4 pawn doesn't work because white gets to play d6 and uh, win the b6 pawn. So this is a really nice variation, emphasizing how white would have been able to save the game. 
But what happened in the game is that white just kind of moved the king around, didn't do anything, and, ev and eventually just lost. So white played f4 at a bad moment, and then slowly started losing pawns. So you'll see this in a few moves. Um, yeah, eventually b3 was played, the bishop kind of jumped around a little bit, queen g4 was played, bishop d1 was a nice move, and now um, the pawns on a4, c4, and e4 are all quite weak. So one pawn dropped, and another pawn dropped after that. So basically, in this position, uh, black's king was too active, ended up winning another pawn, and then the game was over shortly after that. So a nice game, of course, but um, the, the, the human intuition is that we need a pawn break here. We need to play for f4. So rook g1 is a very logical move, and there white would have been able to defend. So let's go on to the next game. And this one was also a game won by Alpha Zero, um, where it played. This was the first one that we're looking at where it played with white. And uh, the interesting thing about this one is that Stockfish was the one that avoided the draw here. In this position, knight h5 could have been played simply attacking the rook when the rook has to go back to d6 and black can repeat moves with knight g7. So in this case, Stockfish was the one that had the draw in hand. So this combination, I mean, this, this opening line that involves a pawn sacrifice is not considered to be dangerous. So this does not refute or change anything with opening theory. Um, and even here, even after Stockfish seemingly allowed a ton of counterplay, um, if we just go after the combination, take, take. Um, my conclusion here is that black should probably be able to draw this position. It re would require very deep and accurate analysis to confirm that, but there's no direct knockout here, and um, materially, black's doing totally fine with five pawns versus four. So there's no clear plan for white to make progress here, so this probably should be a draw. Um, but the main point was that earlier in the game, black was the one with the draw in hand, and black was the one who was pressing. That's why queen b7 was played on move 22. So this game isn't really just a one-dimensional crush by alpha zero. It's actually quite a bit more complicated than that. Stockfish was the one trying to play for the win there and avoiding the repetition. So let's go on to the fourth game. This was the fourth one where um, Stockfish played a pretty anti-positional move with c4 on move 9, um, closing the center and making it very difficult to get counterplay. The thing I found very fascinating about this was this was a pretty bad game overall because here basically um, white's just up a pawn for very little compensation. Of course black does have the bishop pair but isn't really able to do anything with it. Um, the thing that I did find interesting here was that, let me just skip through many moves ahead. So, um, yeah, there were quite a few exchanges here. So actually, the main mistake that was played here was rook to c1. In this position, uh, on move 52, we can actually play rook f1, and then if the same sort of plan is played, takes takes, we can play bishop a6. And what's quite interesting here is that even though black is down a pawn, black's able to draw. Check, 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 and if we play simply rook to a1, white is not able to win this position. It's very interesting because this was another one of those games that gives off the impression that white was completely winning from start to finish. But as it turns out, even as late as move 52, black was able to defend here. So that's pretty interesting. Black has superb compensation for the pawn and white's not able to make progress there. Unfortunately, um, black uh, decided to go after the pawn and then eventually did lose this position. So this was a very nice case of domination here. But interesting that even in this game, which was one of the most one-sided from the opening, um, Black was still able to defend on move 52. So let's go on to game five. Um, game five was one of the few games which, in which Black was lost uh, relatively early. So in this case, um, knight c3, knight b7, knight e4. So the first thing I thought was that the queen was very badly placed when it came, went to h7. When the queen went all the way back to h7 in the game, at that point, Black actually was losing. So for example, if f5, then take, 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 and white can play rook e8 next move, and the knight on b8 is toast. So this position is not good. And, but, um, but here, the only defensive try here was to play d5. 
And the point is to bring the queen back to some kind of reasonable position, for example, on d7. And in this case, black just would have been slightly worse. But an even better defense was to play queen to d8 and then improve the bishop. So basically, black could play bishop e6, take, 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 queen d4. So in this variation, white tries to lift up the rook and uh, try to bring a rook over to g4 or g5. But black's able to give back a piece here, for example, check, queen g7, take, take, take. And in this position, black's able to play with equal material and reaches a drawn endgame. So actually, this position is a good illustration of, of how white's interesting opening idea doesn't really change anything theoretically. Black's still able to defend. The main, the main issue was just that Stockfish put the queen on a very bad square, probably just due to lack of search. So it just the depth wasn't high enough, and it wasn't able to realize why the queen was so bad on h7. So, um, you know, very impressive game by Alpha Zero, very enjoyable to watch, but interesting to be aware of that Stockfish could have defended this way. Let's go on to game six. Um, game six was also quite a dominant game. Games five and six were the two most dominant games that in terms of Stockfish not being able to recover relatively early on. So takes, 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 knight c3, bishop c4, h4, h6. So my first instinct here was again to solve the problem of the queen and play bishop e6 and knight f5 so that the queen can go back to d8. And in looking at this position, the main thing is once Stockfish has all of the, all of, at least all of the minor pieces out, its evaluations are much more trustworthy. And in this position here, it's pretty easy to see that black's doing okay. Um, in terms of focal points for white's attack, g7 is safely guarded, so there's no major problem here. Um, in the game, queen takes c3 was played, bishop f4, knight b7 takes. So here, Stockfish needs to be very fast with development, and that's why knight c5 is the best move. And perhaps black can play something like knight ba6 afterwards. And so this was one variation that I was looking at. Basically, we get to play knight a6, the, the knight comes out, and, and black survives and, and is equal. But what ended up happening here is that the domination was just too much after, after we reached this position here. So at this point, it's very, very hard to, def to defend. Rook fc8 was probably a better defense, but it's still a, a very difficult position. And then as more moves were played, here it just was not possible to, uh, to deal with white's direct plan. And at this point, it was winning. So white... Um, eventually took play into a uh, rook end game and uh, converted the advantage here. So, um, so the the opening again was not refuted and actually interestingly pretty natural human play either on move 18 with bishop e6 or on move 20 with knight c5 would have defended. Just the the really strange queen moves were the main problem for Stockfish there and perhaps it was lack of search where it wasn't able to recognize that. So let's go on to game seven. Um, this was this was one of the this was one of the worst games in terms of uh, opening concepts. I mean, the opening concept by Black wasn't very good. I mean, it looks like White has a, a pretty nice advantage, but it wasn't able to really prove it very effectively. And perhaps the f4 f5 plan may have been incorrect. But what ended up happening here is that Black has a solid position and should be able to hold simply because white has a hard time coming up with any effective pawn breaks. So the interesting thing here was that in this position, so I checked this position with the latest Stockfish version. I let it run to depth, depth 60 and there are, uh, you know, with table bases and everything, and it, it demonstrated that black holds the position quite easily. The only reason really why black lost was because the, the h4 pawn was lost within a few moves. You'll see what I mean. So a simple plan is just to play king f7, and if white plays the plan that was played in the game with knight to g2, we play rook h8, everything is defended, and black draws. So in the game, king h7 was played. The king looks terrible on h7. I don't see what it's doing there. So you'll see what happened in the game. So here, rook to h8 is the only move, and black probably still draws again. But rook d6 was played, and then look what happened. Suddenly, the h4 pawn has been lost, and white's up a pawn, and white ended up converting this. And I'm not really sure actually if black could have been able to defend at this point. It was just completely unnecessary to lose that pawn. Had that pawn not been lost, probably would have been a draw. So, um, well, definitely would have been a draw on move 39 at least. So, um, and on move 42 most likely as well. So 
Um, this was just the case of, of blundering a pawn really for no reason. It's hard, really hard to understand why rook to d6 was played. Again, I think that this was um, caused by lack of depth and also due to uh, the very small hash table sizes. So let's go on to game eight. Uh, let's see, so game eight, um, this was a pawn sacrifice that was highly praised, but the thing is I think that there was a major misconception here. It's an interesting concept, but I think if you showed this to a lot of grandmasters and international masters who have analyzed this type of concept in other openings, or even in this opening, uh, the general conclusion would be that this is an interesting practical idea, but it's not an objective advantage. And you'll see what I mean. Because the real reason why white ended up winning this game, it wasn't because the basic idea was so powerful, it was because there were direct threats by white that were not stopped by black. So I'll show you what I mean. Uh, after queen to h4, so suddenly white starts to have some threats. So in the, you'll see what I mean when I demonstrate this. So if, if queen f7, this is clearly the best defensive move. And the point is that white's plan of repositioning his bishop, so he would like to play this sort of a plan to, to bring the bishop over there. In some cases, it can come to h6. In some cases, it can come here and come into to f6. But if we go bishop to b2, the problem is there's just rook to d2 with a double attack on the b2 bishop and the f2 pawn. So um, the bishop retreat is completely stopped. And so in this case, white doesn't have a forward moving plan and the position is only going to be equal. One plan is to play f4, but black can play bishop c8. And so in this case, if rook a1, there's rook a7. Takes, takes, and in this case, we have either queen a2 check or queen a3. Both moves are drawing for black, but black gets sufficient counterplay here. So it's very interesting that this game gives, gives such a strange impression, but it was really just due to um, black simply missing white's threat. So, so queen g4 was played, and at this point, there isn't really an effective way to deal with that same plan. So that's what the, that's what the main problem was. So if queen e8, there's bishop b2, and then bishop c1, and here white is able to, to carry out the same plan. So that's basically what happened in the game, and then once white got to carry out this plan, pick up the pawn, and just slowly convert with this, um, in this position, the domination was, too, was just too much. So white ended up winning this quite easily from this point forward. But the, the key point was that the real reason why black lost here, it wasn't because the opening concept refuted this whole mainline opening, which is played by countless grandmasters. It's because black missed the move queen to f7, which counters white's plan of bishop to b2. So had this been stopped, there wouldn't have been any major problem here. So let's go on to game nine. So game nine was another French, French defense. Here knight takes d4 would have been a better move, but even for even allowing for everything that was, uh, that white was able to play here. So the king takes d2 and king e3 idea was widely praised. And it's, I have to say, it's a very fascinating and fun idea to look at. Uh, it's a really, really enterprising idea. But the important thing to realize here is that the whole reason why black lost it wasn't because white totally refuted all of black's play. It's just that, that uh, black had to play queen e7 here, which counters white, white's main plan of knight g5. So if knight g5, we go bishop h6. Now there are no combinations. Knight takes f7, or knight takes e6, or bishop takes g6 are not particularly good here. So all of these would actually be bad sacrifices. So this allows us to, to be completely under control here with black. And it turns out that black just defends. Black can play king d7 and rook h7. Now if knight, h, knight g5, there's rook takes h4. Take, we can check and go rook h4. So black defends here pretty comfortably. So the, the real reason why black lost here was because of the move king d7. Actually, the position was equal. So what it means is that white's whole opening concept, while very interesting, doesn't actually refute anything and the, the whole position should have still been drawn. So. Intuitively, it looks like black is very solid here, and that intuition proves to be correct after queen to e7. So this was, this was a really incredible and beautiful combination that was played in the game, and it was amazing to actually watch it play out, but it's really important to realize that the real reason why black lost was just due to not finding the right defensive setup, and probably just simply missing the, the strength of the combination because it was so deep. So let's go on to the last game.
Game 10, this was another game with that Queen's Indian uh, pawn sacrifice. So this one um, takes, yeah, this, th this one was a, a really exciting and fun sacrifice with, with rookie one sacrificing the piece on h6. This is very fascinating to watch. Of course, after rookie one and h4, white's threatening rook takes e7 check. So uh, f6 was played and eventually we had this very fascinating position where white plays bishop e4. So he tries to remove black's main defender around the king. But the problem was after bishop g6, take, take, now black's king is permanently exposed and in terrible shape. So the, the real human move here would be to try to give the king some breathing room, try to give it a, some safe space here over on the king side on g8. So somewhere it can go at least. So take, take, king g8, and after bishop d4, rook f7, it turns out that everything's under control. The e7 bishop is defended, and black will be able to develop his b8 knight very soon. So I was looking at queen g4, even the move knight d7 does not lose here, but I was looking at knight a6, then rook e5, queen d6, and this position's quite solid here. So I analyzed this position quite deeply here. I checked this at depth 44 on, on the latest version of Stockfish, and uh, after rook g7, this is a nice little move here, uh, takes, takes, take knight c7, and black's able to defend this position. So materially, black's doing fine, and uh, his king is, uh, is not able to be seriously attacked. So it turns out that once again, um, natural human defensive moves are better than the very strange moves that were played in the game. I have to assume that the move bishop g6 was just due to lack of depth because my engine finds the move bishop takes e4 just uh, in about a minute or two minutes. So um, this was very strange. This, this was quite odd. So and white ended up winning. It was a very beautiful game. Again, it's, it, it's a real joy to be able to see such wonderful and amazing combinations played but it's also important to realize that this wasn't just directly the result of the combination. So it's important to realize that this amazing combination that was started on move 19 with rook to e1 actually could have been defended against by simply playing the natural move bishop takes e4 and basically just defending like a human, playing king g8, rook f7 to protect the king and uh, so we can shield the king in numerous ways and then simply develop the b8 knight and then when all of the pieces are in play that's when Stockfish's evaluations are more trustworthy and we're able to defend everything. So hopefully this has been instructive and informative and I think that's a lot of the ideas that I've covered here have not been covered in other places and it's, uh, it's fascinating to see how Alpha Zero played but also important to realize how Stockfish could have defended and how in the vast majority of these games uh, Stockfish just made an error late in the game in a drawn position. So that's the main thing to realize here, but these were some really incredible games, and I really hope we get to see more of them.